Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me like he always does for the THI Postscript podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. Andrew, you were in Durham yesterday for Carolina's 56-24 to win over the Blue Devils, a, a game in which Carolina was really in control from minute one to minute 60, a really dominating performance um, from Carolina as a whole. Let's start with the defense. I think the defense was a, a big positive from yesterday's game, especially we, when you look at how they played against Virginia. Needed a bounce-back performance against Duke, and I think we got that. Defensive backs graded out well. Jaleel Taylor had a really good grade as well. I'll let you kind of dive into a little bit more with that. But overall, a really positive performance uh, from the defense, and I think one they really needed. Well, Mac made the point that the starting corners and safeties in this game yesterday were different. None of them were the same that yep. started a corner and safety in the opener against Syracuse. Crazy. That kind of illustrates how depleted they are in the secondary. So with that being said, the fact that you had uh, Holl uh, Dede Hollins, Patrice Berday, uh, Cam Kelly, and Trey Morrison. And Morrison did start Syracuse, but he started at nickel. Mm -hmm. um, those four guys graded out 76.3 or higher on PFF. That's pretty good. That's, that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe that Hollins, Renee, and Kelly combined – were the, the guys they were covering were targeted 11 times. They allowed three receptions. Plus, Hollins had the interception that if somebody would have been willing to block the offensive lineman, yeah. by the way, showed some athletic ability. It was a good play. That was a funny one. Reminds me of my days when I used to go from offensive line to shooting guard in high school. <laughs> that was the a only funny guy play. probably ever to do that. But mm -hmm. if someone would have just shaded him, I think Day Day could have taken think, that yeah. to the house. But they played really well in the secondary. They played with a lot of spirit. I love the way Renee played. So people have been critical because he had a couple of missed tackles. But, man, they needed the older guys to show up and play with spirit, with energy, um, with, with some ferocity, some physicality. And they got that from Renee. They got that from Chaz. They got that from Kimmel. And I think that that on the defensive side of the ball helped set the tone for this game as much as the offense just going right down the field throwing at will, running at will, whatever they wanted to do. It was like a scripted walkthrough. But the defense really, really did its thing, too. And you got to really like the way the secondary kids played. And Day Day Hollins, you know, last year he was buried, but injuries forced him into action. He ended up playing mm -hmm. real well against Duke. He started against Virginia and Pitt and played well. Kind of the same thing this year, but he was dealing with a little bit of an injury. Now he is, prominent role, and he's playing very well. It showed, he's an example, Jacob. Mm -hmm. of the kind of depth they were talking about. I think Max said the other day that the group, as far as the actual depth of reliability, how deep the group was uh, in, in the DB room back mm -hmm. at the beginning of August, was the most he's ever had as a coach. Yeah. Think about that. Mm -hmm. So Hollins, who was ninth or 10th or 11th or whatever, look at how well he's played. That's an indication. Imagine if these guys didn't have injuries. If yeah. Duck was out there, if Michael was out there, Wolf took care of business how good this group would be. So when people are highly critical of the defense and it's on again, off again ways, they got to take that in consideration. And yesterday they were on. Mm -hmm. They were on AJ. It was a, it was a good defensive performance. And like I said, I think it was one that was, that was much needed as well. And, and let me add to Taylor. You brought up uh, Julio Taylor. I'm glad mm -hmm. you did that. He graded out like around 80 or something on PFF, which is fantastic. And one of the things he did well was uh, he ate up blockers. Yeah. Last year, Aaron Crawford and Jason Sturbridge ate up blockers. So it kind of allowed Ch uh, Chaz and Jeremiah to roam a little more freely. They were faster sideline to sideline. Well, this year they're getting blocked more. I think Bateman said last week, Chaz is getting blocked more. Well, why? Because you don't have to use uh, multiple blockers to handle Carolina's defensive line as much. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of allows more one-on-one -on -one situations. But Taylor ate up some blockers. Today, Vahasa gave up some blockers, and that made it a little bit easier for Chaz and Gimbal to roam. And that's why Carolina's defense also looked faster and quicker yesterday. Exactly. Freeing up those linebackers has been something that I think Carolina's kind of struggled with this year just because they haven't got the push from the D-line that they've needed. Yeah. But I think yesterday, like you mentioned, was a prime example of if you can get some guys to play well on that line, your linebackers and your defense as a whole is, is just going to benefit a ton from it. So, A.J., 151 yards rushing, three touchdowns, one touchdown receiving. I'll let you kind of go a little bit more into the stats and what you saw from him yesterday, but just how good is Javante Williams? 
He's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Man. I mean, is. that's that's the no brainer response of the day right there. You can mm-hmm. watch anything on TV today, and that's as no brainer as it gets. That's an easy question right there. <laughs> the question is, how good is he? Mm-hmm. And I don't know that we know yet because he's ascending. I mean, he's getting better and better and better. He was really good last year, and people thought, man, this guy is special last year. <clears throat> he's so much better than what people thought he would be because he had no scholarship offers until 25 minutes after his state championship game and his senior year. So, well, but last year he only had five rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't run the ball well, especially in the red zone last year. He, he was, he's a 933 yards, which is a great year. Michael Carter just got over a thousand, did that in the bowl game, took 13 games, seven games in Javante's at 767 yards. It's wild. He's going to pass. He's going to blow past the 1,000-yard mark. But he has 17 touchdowns right now. He's the most touchdowns of anybody in college football. Mm-hmm. And he's approaching the UNC record. He's got a little ways to go here. He's going to have four more games, four more opportunities to just keep adding on to what he's doing. I don't think he's phased by it. I think he's a pretty humble kid. We're talking about the guy that was a valedictorian in his high school. He's got perspective. Yeah, and I think his mission he's so mission minded I think he just wants to get better every week mm-hmm. and, if, and, and somebody asked Sam yesterday in post game how much has he improved this year and Sam said look he could always truck guys he trucked guys last year but now he's getting around him now he's blowing by him he's getting that second level and turning it on he had 32 and 33 yard TD runs yesterday he did exactly that you know last year maybe those are 15 18 20 yard runs now their touchdowns almost untouched. Mm-hmm. So he's he's getting better. He's becoming an NFL back. And and the thing that really impressed me yesterday about him was Carolina, I can't remember what point in the game it was. I think it was in the third quarter. Uh, they had a third down situation. It was like third and seven or something like that. And he ran a little pattern right over the middle. And Sam hit him with a tight bullet. He caught it and went down and got the first down. That's the kind of thing that's going to get him to stick in the NFL. Yep got to be able to make those plays and it shows the well-roundedness of his game he's a really good player and by the way michael carter is really good too yeah no, it's, they they've got, got an amazing guys. tandem remember we were all gushing about carter michael carter uh, a month ago now mm-hmm. we're gushing about javante williams mm-hmm. that's a great problem to have those two guys because javante only played 31 snaps yesterday jacob mm-hmm. and he posted sick numbers Mm-hmm. Carter was almost at 100 yards, and he had like 30-something yards receiving. That's really good. It really is. And, it's, and, and even even last week at UVA, I think had Carolina – Carolina probably should have done a little bit better running the ball. I mean, just We're not going to beat that game into the ground. Mm-hmm. But these guys combined are going to post really good numbers against just about every opponent. They have the run blocking in front of them. They have the scheme and they're both really, really good. And Javante is just unbelievable. Let's come back and talk about him in, in a month from now and try to compare him to some of UNC's other great running backs. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. It's, it's been a kind of a funny year for Carolina's offense. Cause like you mentioned, you had a guy like Michael Carter who in the beginning of the year was kind of getting all the attention. And then that kind of flipped to where now Javante is getting all the attention, but Guys are kind of forgetting the guy that's really not getting as much attention as maybe some people would expect is Sam Howell. I mean, he's been good this year. 17 touchdowns, five interceptions, had a QB rating of one, uh, 175.8 so far this year. So, I mean, Sam Howell's having a great year, but I guess he's maybe losing a little bit of that limelight because he's got a guy like Javante Williams who, you know, currently leads the, the nation in touchdowns. So, I mean, Sam Howell, you can't forget about him either, can you? Well, his quarterback rating last year was 160, so he's mm-hmm. got a, a better quarterback rating going now. Up, yeah. I think with Sam, people didn't know what to expect last year, so every game he played well, that whole, boy, this is a true freshman. He's going to be so good. So suddenly expectations just skyrocketed. Yeah. And a couple times he's held the ball too long. Some of the sacks have been charged to him. Uh, he's had a couple of curious throwaways. So if he makes a mistake, People are like, oh, my gosh. And they remember that mistake. But he hadn't made that many. He's mm-hmm. been really, really, really good. And the thing that's impressive about him is that a lot of times in an offense that is considered pass happy, you know, air raid is not just a passing offense, as we've seen. Phil Longer mm-hmm. told us that a year ago before they ever lined up and played a game. Now 20 games in, we've seen air raid takes advantage of what the defense gives them. Mm-hmm. They move the ball forward, whether it's the run or the pass, however, however it, it, it's needed, that's what they do. And Sam 
being a guy who could be very, very prolific, he could throw for a lot more yards in a more pass-oriented system, like solely pass-oriented, it, it doesn't face him. He's showing leadership. He's showing growth and maturity because 235 yards, no big deal. They put, they put 56 points on the board. Most teams that have a, a, a highly touted quarterback like him, a ballyhooed quarterback like him, put 56 points on the board, you think 400 yards passing. Look at Clemson last night. They had Travis Etienne on the field, and mm -hmm. the backup quarterback there for 400 some yards. The great. game sort of dictated that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that when Carolina needs Sam to do that, he will. He did it in Charlottesville. He did it at Florida State, by the way, both losses. I think Sam fully understands that being a part of what they do, being a part of a balanced attack makes everybody so much better. And you got to love that maturity. you got to love the fact that, that – other than a couple times, he hasn't forced things. He plays like a pro out there. He's still got stuff to learn. He's still got improving to do. But the guy wants to win. He has the right men mentality for a quarterback on an offense with a lot of dudes who can do a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. that's what you want. You don't want me first guys out there. And that's what I love so much about Sam. His maturity makes him sort of a pro right now in a lot of ways. And I'd be willing mm -hmm. to bet you that the staff would say the same thing. So when you've got Michael – being the flavor of the day for a while. And then Javante being the flavor of the day. Last week it was the Diami. The constant is that quarterback who's excellent every week and is going to get the ball wherever it needs to go every week in order to win games, in order to be effective on offense. Yeah. That's a great thing to have too. We're, we're doing lots of compliments today because the offense has a lot of stuff to be complimented about. But you're in excellent shape when you have Sam Howell uh, behind center since he's rarely ever under center. And AJ, to stay on Sam Howe for a quick second again, would you agree that it seems like to me a lot of the mistakes that he's made and the turnovers he's caused, you can look at yesterday as a prime example, is him trying to just do too much at times. Do you think that's a part of his game that he still needs to kind of work on cutting out? Yeah, he's 20 years old. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to happen. It was a poor play yesterday. And it's usually happening when he's moving mm -hmm. and under duress, which has happened more this year than probably should. They, 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 st they did a pretty solid job. They did a really good job, actually, keeping Duke off him. Only one sack. Duke was third in the nation in total sacks coming into the game. Uh, we talked last week about how they were going to keep Garrett Walston back to, mm -hmm. do, to help with pass protection and even the running backs too. Um, they did a really good job with that. They kept Sam clean. But that play, he was rolling and tried to make a play and just made a mistake. He should have tucked it in and run because he had room to run. Mm -hmm. you know, where we were in the press box, we were kind of high looking down. It's an interesting angle. You could see everything, which is kind of neat. Everything developed. And there was a clear path for him to pick up seven or eight yards. Mm -hmm. So he'll learn. It's a film yeah. room special. It's almost exactly. good when a guy plays really, really well. And there's a couple things to pick at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Keep that, keep that charge going, man. Yeah, and I mean, if anybody's going to be critical of himself, it's going to be Sam Howe. We've heard that a oh, lot from the coaches. Yeah. And he, he's Sam, a big Sam only so. look at like the – yeah, you're right, Jacob. Sam only looked at like three or four things he didn't do well. He's going to yeah. uber focus on. Well, sleep that night, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's going to love he's, that, though. I love that. You do. I love that. When you cover great athletes, that's the way they are. Yep. Yeah, I did all those things well. That's fine. They don't rest on that. It's mm -hmm. I got to fix what didn't work. Yeah, and that's what it takes to be that. great. You know what I mean? So that's that's definitely a good trait that Sam Howell is, and it's probably the reason that he's, you know, been as good as he is in his, you know, year and a half as Carolina's quarterback. So, AJ, another big positive from yesterday – that really was a result of Carolina controlling the game from start to finish was a lot of young guys played, a lot of freshmen, a lot of second-year players that maybe haven't seen a lot of minutes, um, got some snaps. So uh, I think you wrote a stat down. There was 200 to 210 combined offense and defensive snaps for freshmen. So really positive day for Carolina when you add that up because one thing that Matt Brown has touched on since the moment he took the job in November of 2018 is building debt. If I got a dollar for every time he said that, I'd be sitting pretty right now. So – that, that's really a positive from yesterday was allowing those guys to get in there and get some minutes, especially when you consider a game like Charlotte being canceled, where Max mentioned that being a time where he expected a lot of his young guys to play. Haven't really got a lot of opportunities, but yesterday was definitely a time where those young guys got a, got a chance to go out there and, and show what they can do. Yeah, and there's a lot of value in every snap a guy gets in a game situation because For sure. it's just different. More so, I think, in football than any other sport. Maybe baseball, mm -hmm. seeing live pitching. You, you call a guy up in the minor, see major league pitching, it's just different, right? It's different. In mm -hmm. football, getting on the field, the speed, the contact, the, the, the viciousness of the sport is just different. Well, they played 16 true freshmen on offense or defense 
yesterday. Yeah. And what, what I think is really interesting is a lot of the ones on offense played five, six, eight snaps. It's a little bit of, of, of experience that will help because they get a taste. But as Mac will tell you, it's also they got in the game. It's spirit lifting. They're going to practice better because they got in the game. They felt more mm -hmm. part of things. They, they got that little taste. They know a little bit more about what to expect. So as they continue to develop and they go through their drills and practice uh, this week, they're going to do so having just played a few snaps in the game. And it just kind of revs you up a little bit more and gets your mind right. You're a little bit sharper. You practice a little bit better. It's human nature. If you're not playing, it's going to be tough. We, we've all been through that in various things in life. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, the reps are huge, too. Defensively, they played six true freshmen. Mm -hmm. And let me read these reps here for you. I've got them written down. Um, Kamen Rucker, 33. Jaquarius Conley, 33. Desmond Evans, 29. Tony Grimes, 23. And yeah. then uh, Pinder and Murphy, 13 each. I kind of thought Murphy would get more snaps at defensive tackle. Yeah. in that game, uh, but still 13 snaps, and he's starting to accumulate snaps each week where he's getting a real decent amount of experience. So you got to love that. You got to love the fact they got a lot of those guys on the field on defense, and that's where they really need to build the depth more than on offense right now. And by the way, Desmond Evans, we saw flashes. Mm -hmm. You could see the weight training starting – show in the way he plays because as oh, Kevin yeah. Roy so uh, appropriately put it he had a bull rush where he almost got to the quarterback fourth yeah. quarterback in the movie yesterday I didn't think bull rush in Des Evans a month ago no but we saw that yesterday and he played well he got to the quarterback once he was almost there another time made a move a couple of times uh, Conley who kind of struggled when he got that opportunity at BC he did some good things so 210 collective snaps for 16 true freshmen on offensive defense yesterday, that's really, really good for the spirit of the program, and it's really good for some of those kids to get reps. Even mm -hmm. offensive line, with Baker played like nine snaps. Mm -hmm. That's going to help a lot. Oh, sure. Adorno, that's going to help them getting those reps out there. It's going to make them better at practice, like I said. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, it, it's invaluable just getting live game reps. Cause like you mentioned, you, you just can't, you can't really practice reps. You just, they're just not the same. You can't replicate that, especially when you're playing at such a high level of, of football in the ACC. I mean, there's no replicating that, you know, D, so. DJ Jones played five snaps yesterday, carried the ball a couple of times. I know. Looked good. Mm -hmm. How pumped is he going to be at practice? Oh, he's feeling wow. great. <laughs> I could do it. Mm -hmm. I had a good running. I mean, it, I mean, human nature is such a huge part of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, practice, I would imagine, be pretty fun, at least today, because they're going out there and they're, they're – I can't remember what Larry used to call it. They're, they're, they're not, you kind of get loosen all the tightness because you're yeah. always tight the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, today will probably be a pretty spirited short workout for these kids because so many have gotten, gotten the game. I think they played – total, I think they played uh, 57 guys on offense and defense. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of guys. Yeah, it's a lot of guys in a, you know. in a conference road game. Yeah, I guess a rival, nonetheless. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think we, I don't think any of us expected you know that to happen going into yesterday's game. But like I said, Carolina just just dominated from from minute one to minute sixty. So, AJ, last thing I want to touch on before I let you go, um, just focusing on the rest of the season, where the Tar Heels kind of go from here. Three more ACC games, also play Western Carolina. Um, I know Notre Dame's win over Clemson last night kind of complicates. Carolina's road to an ACC championship game even more makes it a lot less likely. But, well, where does this team go from here? I mean, there's a lot of momentum after this game. Is it just a case of trying to do the same thing against Wake Forest next week, which I think is going to be a tricky game? Wake Forest has been well this season, also coming off a of bye week. So a little bit more time to prepare for Carolina. And then you consider the end of the, end of the year with a, a tough game against Notre Dame and then have to go down to Miami. So definitely a lot of momentum for this team now. Um, I, I think it's just a case of – trying to find wins and playing well after losses, trying to cut that out and just playing well every week and, and kind of seeing how things go. What did I say the mission was this past week? Get better. Uh, yeah, get better. Exactly. exactly. Just get better. Mm -hmm. That has to be the focus. Yep. Th at this time of year, it goes when they started to take off and you saw that we started seeing a lot of the results of the work, the massaging that the staff was doing. And they mm -hmm. played really well to close out the season. Uh, they, have an, uh, they have a very different schedule to close out this season than they had a year ago, so that will certainly complicate things. They just got to get better. You're right. This is a tricky game. In fact, all three ACC games remaining have quarterbacks who can run. Absolutely. And that's been the bugaboo for the Tar Heels. 
Mm-hmm. And we'll see. You know, they played pretty well up front against Duke. But, you know, Duke, Chase Price isn't a running quarterback. But Duke, Duke made a switch, put in a guy who ran some. Carolina didn't really expect that scheme. And Duke ended up getting a few yards in the second half. Now, granted, it, the game was essentially over. So I don't want to make too much of that. But we already know what UVA did. Uh, we're running the ball some with a quarterback. Mm-hmm. We already know what Virginia Tech did. We already know what FSU did. So Wake, Notre Dame, and Miami, their quarterbacks are going to run. Uh, Carolina had trouble with that quirky sort of handoff delayed thing that Wake does. Yeah, uh, they had trouble different. with that last year. And now Wake was maybe a little bit better last year, a little more talented in that, in that role last year. Uh, but Carolina was also better up front last mm-hmm. year. So uh, this is a really big game. It's going to be a great preparation week for the Tar Heels. It's going to be really huge to prepare for the opponent while also getting better. And you know Dave Kloss is going to have a plan. He's a really oh, good man, coach. Yeah. Yeah. Wake looked terrible early in the year. Now Wake's respectable. That's got Dave Clawson's fingerprints all over it. So the Tar Heels have got to have a great week of practice. Uh, they've got to string together really good performances in back-to-back weeks, which we haven't seen yet. So that will be another – here's that word growth again, Jacob. That will mm-hmm. be another sign of growth that they can do that or a sign of not growing if they don't do it. Mm-hmm. And then they have the week off and then Notre Dame and then uh, Miami. So they've got some tough games coming up. We're going to find out a lot about this team. Uh, we're going to find out a lot about how much they can improve on the defensive side of the ball, but it all begins up front. Tanner playing well yesterday was a good sign. They need more of that. They need Bahasic. Uh, they need all those guys, uh, Tamari Fox, to play really well up front and allow the linebackers to make plays. You saw how good Chaz was yesterday yep. when he was free to make plays. Mm-hmm. And they're going to need that to, to beat Wake and then especially to to have a chance in those last two games. Mm-hmm. I saw somebody say that Wake Forest is the new Georgia Tech of the ACC with just kind of how weird their hand – just how much different some of the stuff they does is now that Paul Johnson's no longer in, in Atlanta now. So I was like, I thought that was a pretty interesting take. I was like, I, I could probably agree with that. <laughs> I think the media probably likes Dave Clawson better than Paul Johnson. Yeah, too. I'm about to say, I, I've heard some stories about him. So, <laughs> And, you know, the, as far as the ACC championship thing, I, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I just no. think right now, just get better. Mm-hmm. Uh Dame and Clemson look like they're probably headed toward the ACC title game. I wouldn't worry about it. No. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Uh, Carolina no. just – they haven't played yet collectively through seven games like a team that should be in the ACC title game. Definitely. To be honest definitely. with you. Mm-hmm. Just get better. And just however things play out, they play out. I wouldn't mm-hmm. worry about that at all. They just got to get better tomorrow, today. They got to get their off Monday. They got to get better Tuesday. I know it's kind of trite and people are like, just saying that stuff all the time because it's true because that's what the coaches are saying. Just yeah. get better. Exactly. Prepare well, get better, be ready to play next week because it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, I think that's – I totally agree with you on what the coaches are saying. This team's focus and this program's focus should just be getting better every week and, and definitely agree with, you know, when you look at Carolina and, and some of the games they've lost this year, I mean, I don't think any Carolina fan can sit here and say this team deserves or looks like a team that – could win the ACC championship. I think they've still got a lot of growing to do. I think at their peak potential for sure, but just haven't been able to kind of put that consistency together that you know the likes of Clemson and Notre Dame have done so far this year. So, so yeah, AJ, that's going to do it for us in the in the THI Postscript podcast. I uh, appreciate you coming on here today, AJ. And um, as always, guys, if you've enjoyed it, be sure to like the video. Be sure to share the video, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks. Thanks.